following content for Best Galaxy Australian Breaking News was adapted by for Australian Lad Studios and Best Galaxy Australian Studios. But re-uploading episodes is not allowed for. Uploader will be strongly prohibited, or else taken down for copyright. In Best Galaxy Australian Studios. Good evening, welcome to Best Galaxy Australian Breaking News, my name is Galaxy Australian Guy or Best Galaxy Australian. News 1, Senator Lydia Thorpe says she will lodge a complaint to the Human Rights Commission against her former party, the Australian Greens, claiming she experienced racism during her time in the organisation. But the party said it is not aware of the complaint and is committed to stamping out racism at work and in Parliament. Thorpe made the claim during an interview with the ABC's Insiders, where she also foreshadowed abstaining from a Senate vote on the Indigenous Voice referendum, saying she cannot support the proposed consultation body, but that she also would not join the no campaign against the constitutional change. A longtime skeptic of the voice, Thorpe claimed the body would be powerless to change outcomes for Indigenous people but she continued hinting she would reconsider her stance if the federal government implemented further recommendations of the Royal Commission into Aboriginal Deaths in Custody and the Bringing Them Home Report into separation of children from families. Last week during a Senate estimates hearing, Thorpe asked Green Senator Sarah hansen -Yum, News 2, a man has been charged with domestic violence offences after police found a woman's body inside a Western Sydney apartment after earlier failing to locate the source of a domestic dispute. Police received an anonymous phone call about an alleged domestic dispute at a Liverpool apartment block about 11.45 p.m. on Friday. Officers arrived at the unit block about 3 a.m. on Saturday, but were not able to find the apartment where the incident had occurred. Inquiries into who had made the phone call continued throughout Saturday, police said. About 8 p.m. Saturday, police... OK guys, that's all for the news. We'll be right back.
the ways to have a Whopper could unite the nation. No matter if you like Impossible or Double Bacon, we can agree there's a Whopper for you. 200,000 ways, boom, there's the proof. F-E-K, have it your way. Tayo sa Jure A Kung saan lahat ay okay Sa Jure A Lahat dito ay super cool Lahat mga maganda dito Sa Jure A Sa Jure A Napatunay na ng bayi Wala namang iba Quality shopping ang aming dala O Papa Jure A talaga kayo A supermarket namin Ay Jure A Ooh Ukraine. I'll play. What the heck? <laughs> that was only the last show of Michael. So um. June 25th. There's a war going on in the streets. It's the War on Thirst. Splunk is winning the War on Thirst with the new grenade-shaped can. Hey yo, pull the pin and blow your thirst right off in that brand new taste explosion. Boom! Now that's the sound of refreshment. Sprunk, go AWOL from the Cola Wars with an energizing mix of lemon, lime, ten times the caffeine and sugar. Plus, mercury and benzene for that extra pop. Yo, it'll bring the temperature right up. And the bubbles. Other beverages use carbon dioxide. But use ether to kick up that phase. Thanks to all that mercury, you won't remember anything that tasted so good. Now pick up a Sprunk Thermonuclear six-pack. Kill thirst and liven up the party. Toss your friends a Sprunk in the grenade-shaped can and enter the Sprunk sweepstakes where you can win a real case of grenades. Sprunk, blow your thirst right off in that brand new taste explosion. Coming soon to the Los Santos Convention Center, it's Mike Andrews. Poor people, stop complaining. Start living. You can't take the money with you when you die. Even I can't. He's changed millions of lives with his book, Rags Are Riches. This all-day seminar features workshops on cooking potatoes, dumpster diving, huffing paint, bathing alternatives, and pharmaceutical baking. Instead of complaining about being poor, lady, enjoy it. Mike, I can't feed my kids, and the rent's due. Whoa, bitch, settle it down. Are you saying this ain't the greatest country in the world? Wait, hold on, hold on, wait, everyone. USA, USA, USA. Hear Mike's favorite program, such as There's No Rich People, The Rich Are Miserable, Play Harmonica, and Expect Less, Achieve More. See Mike Andrews live for only $200, payable in 10 installments. Reserve your seat today. Cock a doodle doo, it's time for chicken. Cock a doodle doo, it's time for a feast. Eat a 90 piece bucket, you can tell. He's been to Clucking Bell. The chicken is a bird with a tiny brain. So we assume he doesn't feel any pain. We shrink their heads and we breed them fast. Six wings, 40 breasts, and then they're gassed. Cock a doodle doo, we're psychotic crazy. Cock a doodle doo, factory farming's insane. We denied it all before our stock price fell. Come down to the Clucking Bell. Clucking Bell! If you enjoy it, the chicken didn't die in vain.
Let's, let's move on for the news three. Who were detained while trying to resolve a dispute over unpaid wages are still being held in Qatar four months after their arrest. Shakir Ullah and Safar Iqbal from Pakistan and an Indian national have allegedly been sentenced to six months in prison and fined 10,000 rials, 2,220 pounds each. The findings, first established by the human rights group Equidem and verified by The Guardian, are a shocking postscript to the World Cup, which FIFA promised would leave a lasting legacy of better workers' rights in the Gulf state. Qatar has not commented on the case. The three men were among hundreds of security guards employed by Stark Security Services, a local private security company who were deployed at key sites throughout the World Cup but were laid off in the days after the final, with months still left on their contracts. Ulla, who was affectionately known as Chacha, uncle in Urdu, by his colleagues, was described by one as a calm, quiet person, but when it comes to his rights, he will not allow you to cheat him. Calling for the immediate release of the three men, Equidem's director, Mustafa Qadri, said the men had been punished for simply demanding what they and hundreds of their colleagues were owed after their contracts were terminated early. This is the true cost of FIFA's reckless disregard for the rights of people who helped them generate huge profits, Qadri said. Hundreds of other former Stark security workers are also coming to terms with their own traumatic ordeal after disputing the early termination of their contracts. While Lionel Messi lifted the World Cup trophy in Qatar after what FIFA's president, Gianni Infantino, called the best ever World Cup, Jacob Asterisk and Patrick Asterisk, from Kenya, were told they were being fired. They had spent much of the tournament working as security guards at Stadium 974, which hosted matches involving Argentina, Brazil, France and Portugal and stars such as Messi, Mbappé and Ronaldo. They say the message came as a shock because their contracts still had three months left to run. They were then instructed to collect their final salary for the days they had worked in December and leave their accommodation. Just days after the final they suddenly found themselves jobless and homeless. When they needed you, they treated you well, but now they are done with you, you are nothing to them, said Jacob. Cities in Vietnam are cutting the use of public lighting to save energy as unusually hot temperatures threaten to stretch the country's power supplies. A sweltering heatwave has gripped swathes of Asia over recent months, causing school closures and deaths in India, as well as health warnings across many countries in the region. Vietnam State Utility EVN warned this month that unusually high temperatures could place the national power system under pressure due to a spike in electricity consumption, while water levels at some hydropower dams were lower than normal. The Ministry of Industry and Trade said energy-saving measures would allow power to be conserved for domestic use and for the country's crucial manufacturing sector. OK guys, that's all for the news, we'll be right back. Could unite the nation No matter if you like impossible or double bacon We can agree there's a whopper for you 200,000 ways, boom, there's the proof Have it your way Australian Nights 2023, coming in the June 25th. Feel any pain We shrink their heads And we breed them fast Six 
Bugs, wings, 40 breasts, and then they're gassed. Cock a doodle doo, we're psychotic crazy. Cock a doodle doo, factory farming's insane. We denied it all before our stock price fell. Come down to the Luckin Bell. Luckin Bell! If you enjoy it, the chicken didn't die in vain. There's a war going on in the streets. It's the War on Thirst. Splunk is winning the War on Thirst with the new grenade-shaped can. Hey, yo, pull the pin and blow your thirst right off in that brand new taste explosion. Boom! Now that's the sound of refreshment. Sprunk, go AWOL from the Cola Wars with an energizing mix of lemon, lime, ten times the caffeine and sugar. Plus, mercury and benzene for that extra pop. Yo, it'll bring the temperature right up. And the bubbles. Other beverages use carbon dioxide. We use ether to kick up that phase. Thanks to all that mercury, you won't remember anything that tasted so good. Now pick up a Sprunk Thermonuclear six pack. Kill thirst and liven up the party. Toss your friends a Sprunk in the grenade shake can and enter the Sprunk sweepstakes where you can win a real case of grenades. Sprunk! Blow your thirst right off in that brand new taste explosion. We're back guys, let's move on. The Australian News. Australian News 1, a tight-knit regional Victorian community, is mourning the death of four teens in a car crash as a sole survivor fights for life. Police remained at the scene of the crash on 1 Nigretta Falls Road, Bachara, on Saturday evening after the car with five people on board lost control and hit a tree. The crash was reported by a passerby about 9.30 a.m. Generic photo of shipping containers at Port Botany. Two men charged after police find $60 million worth of cocaine in shipping container in Sydney. Read more. Two females and two males died at the scene and a fifth passenger was flown to Melbourne's Alfred Hospital, where she remains in a serious condition. Those who died in the crash are yet to be formally identified and their ages have not been confirmed by police. The sole survivor, a teenage girl, sustained upper body injuries in the crash on the rural road, which has a 100 km per hour speed limit. Detectives from the Major Collision Unit were still probing the scene on Sunday morning before the crumbled wreck was towed away. Australian News 2, the vacant land of the former Bulimba Barracks snakes its way around a bend on the banks of the Brisbane River. Here, the river widens and seeps into the fabric of the surrounding suburb skiffs and canoes sit beside SUVs and road bikes in the garages of restored timber cottages, old Queenslanders and villas adorned with lush, subtropical gardens. Few people who live outside Bulimba would have visited the barracks since it was sold by the federal government in 2020. Established as an industrial base by the U.S. military in 1943, 80 years later this 20 hectares of the land has become a flashpoint in a national debate around the need to increase housing supply and to preserve urban green space. At the center of much of this debate is Greens MP Max Chandler-Mather, who pro- Okay guys, that's all I will see you tomorrow for the next week.